Hello everyone, my name is Adam Sporka and it's a great honor for me to be invited to this conference as a speaker again. Um, I'm interested in music and technology of music. Last time here I spoke about our adaptive music in Kingdom Come Deliverance by Warhol Studios. I love medieval music and I love the project. Well, some of you know uh, that there is another music subject that I really like and that's chiptunes and uh, all things related to them. So this talk is going to be a bit more nerdy because I'm going to be talking exactly about that. I'm going to introduce a little audio programming language called Gradrigo. It's for people like myself who like blurring the lines between programming and sound design. It can be used as a standalone live coding platform, as a VST synthesizer, or even as a Unity plugin for rendering chiptune style sound effects and music in real time. I'll present the basic principle and syntax and show some demos. There is one particular kind of chiptunes I always adored, and that is Atari 800 XL sound. Um, it has four channels of audio, it has 16 levels of volume, and all the sounds that you can generate are somehow related to square waves. Uh, you can make tones, you can do noises, you can make something in between, but uh, it sounds harsh no matter what you do, and that makes it super characteristic. Um, there is one super fun quirk about it, and that it's it's tuning. Um, you couldn't play just any frequency. Atari 800 XL was one of those computers uh, which was using integer frequency division in order to generate uh, an output uh, tone frequency. Basically, you have some, you have a bass frequency, and you are dividing it by uh, by an integer number. And you you only can have tones of this of, of these frequencies, nothing in between. So, for example, if you want to generate 440 hertz, which is uh, one line A, um, you have to take into account that your bass frequency is 64 kilohertz, and so you're finding uh, an integer n such as that when you multiply the frequency you want to you want to get it needs to be the closest to to the to the base frequency and and since we are dealing with integers you have to round it somehow so you can round it down or you can round it up so you you end up having uh, the n being 145 or 146 if you do 145 um, you get something which is a, something slightly too sharp. If you do 146, you get something which is slightly too flat. Some chords will always sound perfectly in tune, and some chords will always sound super out of tune. So, like I'm playing right now in the background. So constraints like these made people creative. Uh, the lack of custom sounds um, made people deal less with the sound design and focus more on the melodies and you know on, on what the sounds were representing rather than how the sounds were supposed to sound. Um, and the lack of proper tuning uh, would make people careful when applying harmonies. And also low number of no uh, low number of voices uh, gave rise to RPGs, which is a very very characteristic sound of the 1980s and 1990s chiptune. Many years ago, I started um, teaching. Uh, things related to game audio at the Czech Technical University and recently also at Charles University. And one of the first things that I would do with my students is that I'm, I'm showing them how to type raw audio data in an hexadecimal editor and then import them to Audacity. Because uh, to me, it's a, it's a way to introduce the concept of digital audio, where I'm showing how the sample values affect the volume and uh, the period of the let's say patterns or structures that I that I type in determine the the pitch of the of the note of the tone and I'm also illustrating some pitfalls related to PCM audio data formats. One way of looking at this thing at, at this activity is essentially that I was playing a role of a very simple grammar um, that I had my the elementary fragment of of a waveform and uh, my note essentially would be, uh, you know, concatenation of those fragments, one after another, after another, after another, which in turn uh, generates this, this string of numbers. When, and when those numbers are interpreted as samples, uh, this is what you get to hear from your, from your audio interface. So I made this little toy in JavaScript. You essentially type in uh, the waveforms and how those waveforms should be concatenated one after another. The colon here represents the sample with value zero, and exclamation mark is one, the peak amplitude. So in, in the box A, I now concatenate boxes one and two, which means I'm generating low and high phases of the square wave, and whatever I type into run is going to, is going to be play. 
So now I have three tones, A, B, and C, and uh, I'm gonna make a, a, a bit longer instances of those. So um, P is going to be a, a longer tone A, and Q is going to be a longer tone B. And now when I start putting random sequences of those letters, I start getting interesting glitchy sounding sound effects. So I realized that this started looking like a very, very simple audio programming language. And there are many audio programming languages out there and beautiful pieces of art have been written in them. Um, very often they approach the problem of audio synthesis by simulating different components of real life synthesizers such as signal generators, sequencers, filters, patch cables, timers, etc. Et and uh, some of them don't generate the audio signal directly, they would use middle, MIDI to trigger some instruments when scripted to do so. But instead of having all those different units, I wanted to keep exploring my one entity used for everything approach and I created Gradrigo a grammar-driven concatenative synthesizer. And uh, the basic idea is that the, the audio is generated sample by sample by expanding the rules of the grammar presented to the synthesizer. So, yeah, the audio is generated sample by sample, which means that we are working with the base frequency, which means that we will be bound by those quirks that I mentioned in, in the, you know, uh, at the beginning of my talk. So we are pretty much catering to 8-bit acoustic aesthetics here. Uh, the output is mono, to keep things simple, uh, and all audio is generated from scripts only, and there are no samples on input, and the output is unfiltered, so some treatment of audio in your pipeline is definitely advisable. So the rules that we are interpreting are called boxes in Gradrigo terminology, and the boxes are there to generate sequences of audio samples. To play a sound effect, you instantiate a box which contains a sequence of the sample values for direct output or the names of other boxes. Gradrigo exists in a number of forms. Uh, one of them is, uh, is a Windows console application, gradrigo.exe, which uh, is going to parse your input file and generate audio directly to your audio interface. And you can interact with it by uh, mapping certain keys of your keyboards to different boxes. Uh, you can hook your MIDI keyboard to it, and it's interactive. So when you change the code, you also change the sound next time you are triggering it. So it works something like this. I am now copying and pasting the source code from this presentation to an empty text file, and I'm adding a com command that will bind a key to this box. Then I run Gradrigo with that file as a parameter, and by pressing the key, I get to hear this box. It's been just a short blip, so I'm making it a bit longer by adding more periods in my signal. The underscores and dashes are there to draw my square wave, and Gradrigo detects that the file changed and reparses everything on the fly. And now I'm making the periods longer, which means that my tone will go down. There is a simple way how to make an endless loop in Gradrigo, and just type uh, this at loop label. Um, inside the box, and when the box is done producing its samples, it will just uh, ju jump back and keep going forever. Um, on this slide, the higher note box uh, makes a square wave with a period of eight samples, uh, four minimum, four maximum, and they are encoded with, uh, you know, with uh, underscores and dashes here. Uh, there is a, a lower tone as well, which which just illustrates how to make a tone which is slightly, which is which is one octave lower by having you know double the period. Eight samples uh, at 48 kilohertz would amount to 6,000 hertz of the frequency of the tone, and 16 samples would be 3,000 hertz. And this is a simple alarm clock sound. So we have two boxes here. We have a capital B for beep, and we have a lowercase p for pause. And um, so again, it's the, the beep is essentially an endless loop of the square wave, but it's limited in, 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 its, in its length. So this box will only generate 6,000 samples and then it will stop. And then we have a similar thing for the pause, except that there is just a, an endless loop of silence. Zero in these back quotes means no amplitude. So, but duration is 6,000, so this is the same thing. And then the alarm is endless concatenation of, of the beep and the pause, beep and the pause, beep and the pause, beep and the pause, and eight pauses. 
Now we have enough that we could start making boxes for individual pitches of tones and for different lengths, but it would be very cumbersome to cover any reasonable piece of piece of art. There are four built-in generators of audio, the square wave, sawtooth, and two pokey chip styled noises. You can hear them in the background right now. To give an example how to use a square wave generator, um, in order to generate a C4, a note, uh, we just write the box like this. So we want a half a second, so that would be 24,000 uh, samples. And uh, the square wave um, period would be 183 samples, uh, which corresponds to the frequency that we want to obtain for C4. And whenever it's asked, it just generates the next sample the next sample, the next sample, the next sample, and it just it has an internal counter so that it knows when to output low and high values of the sample, but we don't have to write those underscores and, and dashes anymore. Well, we still need to figure out how many samples a period should have in order to make a tone of certain pitch, and we still need to figure out how many samples there are for a certain amount of milliseconds of qu or quarter notes. In Gradrigo, there is no concept of a timeline. There are no timers, only counters of samples. If you want to wait two seconds, you just generate 96,000 samples at, the, at zero amplitude. To make things easier, there are these conversions available. A tilde in front of a number means calculate how many samples at the current sampling rate make this many seconds. And uh, it could be a float, floating point number. Uh, the result is always an integer. Uh, an exclamation mark means uh, calculate how many samples there are to make a given number of quarter notes. Uh, BPM is 120 by default, but it could be set. Um, an at sign means a number of samples in a period uh, that corresponds to this many hertz, to this, you know, to the frequency of this many hertz. And uh, finally, uh, a hash sign means a number of samples in a period that corresponds to a given MIDI note. For example, hash 60 would be a frequency of C4. We want to generate for the duration of 0.5 seconds. That's the tilde here. And uh, we want to generate a square wave of 60, uh, of, of the MIDI number 60, which we know that that's, that's a, that is a C4. And essentially those those numbers, those uh, those names of, 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 uh, of notes are built in as, as constants so that you don't have to remember that or you don't have to you know convert this thing in your head all the time. So let's make some melodies now. Uh, a melody is a concatenation of notes. So let's start by making a box for a note. Um, our melody is just going to be a simple sequence of eighth notes. So uh, that is a half of, of a quarter note. So uh, uh, exclamation mark 0.5 means a half of a quarter note. That's an eighth note. So a note expects a parameter uh, so that it could be reused for all different all different pitches that we want to express. Um, and this parameter is essentially a MIDI number of the note that we want to generate. And so this number is passed through the, this uh, time converter to the square wave generator so that it generates the, the appropriate uh, square wave of the, of the period which corresponds to this MIDI number. And then the melody is uh, essentially another box which uh, concatenates all those notes. And we can see two shorthands here. So all the MIDI numbers here are uh, replaced with uh, the note names for easier reading. And the name of the box needs to be written only once and it's reused the next time a parameter appears. So uh, you, only, you only type down note colon A4 and then F4 is the same thing as note colon F4, note colon F4, note colon A4 and so, and so on and so forth. Up until now, we were only dealing with con concatenation of sequences, but uh, we can also layer the sequences. A box can have multiple sequences and they are played simultaneously. They are produced simultaneously. So essentially, next time a box is, is asked to generate a sample, it will ask all its sequences, each one of its sequences to generate the next sample. And then they are summed and returned as, as an output. So in this case, we have three sequences which play which play together so we have nice harmonies sometimes it's nice to be able to to modify the parameters of certain things on the fly and for that there are very simple expressions mechanism built in gradrigo so all the expressions are there to modify the values of variables and uh, all of the expressions are pre-compiled for performance so 
So when you type them into your source code, they are only compiled once. And here we have an example of a sound effect utilizing those expressions. It has two parts, the fall and the explosion. Uh, the fall part is a sliding tone starting at C6 and uh, going down. It will last exactly one second. Um, we generate the square wave in the loop, uh, but with each iteration we increase the period a little. Uh, the variables are floats, but the square wave generator will keep producing the sample perfect square wave by rounding them to integers. Um, and the explosion part is uh, very similar, except that we're using a different waveform generator. Gradrigo can be used to generate music. And uh, we have two ways how to do it. One is uh, essentially this by making simple melodies and harmonies and writing code like this. Or we can use Gradrigo as a VST where we assign different boxes to different keys on your keyboard. And then in order to generate uh, music for your game from Gradrigo, using Gradrigo, you would just produce the music offline in your favorite digital audio workstation. And then you would use your favorite middleware to drive your music. It's so these two, these two things essentially. This is an example of a scripted music in Gradrigo. Uh, it's a demonstration song whose uh, script looks like this. Up there, uh, there are uh, waveforms for individual uh, like notes and per percussions and stuff like that. And then later on, there are individual patterns and individual sequences for, for different, diff different measures and stuff like that. And down here is the order of those, of those measures and sequences. I will not go into detail here, it's just that as you can see, uh, this script contains the definition of individual wave waveforms as well as the entire piece of music. And since Gradrigo reparses the files on the fly, it can be used as a very simple live coding platform for real-time chiptune performances. I have already the box for melody typed in, and now I'm making a bass drum track and some hi-hats. some open hi-hats on right and um, I'm gonna thicken I'm gonna thicken up the melody line a bit so add a bit of the bass so yeah fun stuff like this Now let's look at Gradrigo as a VST plugin for a digital audio workstation. Down here, we can see assignment of boxes to different keys on a keyboard. By pressing the, that key, we get to hear the sound. And of course, uh, we can use a sequencer to, to drive all that, so then we can have a full music production done just using Gradrigo. You can experiment with creating your own patches for MIDI-based music production. Here are some of my tests. Currently, I'm testing it in Unity. Any game object can instantiate its own Gradrigo, or you can just have a single shared instance between all objects. If they're separate, you can easily apply some special effects on them. Do you need a COM device in your game to beep algorithmically? Well, now you can. Um, the audio data are fed via an audio filter read member um, of mono behavior, and the sample rate is correctly set up from audio settings. The actual the API is super simple. Um, there is a parse string. Uh, which parses any Gradrigo source code. Could be a box, could be an entire file. 
Um, the live coding capability applies here too. So if, uh, if an object is playing sound, the playback will change when the rules are reparsed. Um, then, you can, uh, then you can call start voice uh, to start playing a box and uh, you can give it uh, some parameters if you need. Um, set variable is to set a globally visible variable. Uh, the boxes uh, that play may respond to it uh, if their code uses it. For example, you're doing a chiptune sound of a car engine and you want to control its RPM. And uh, finally, release voice. Um, so simply add uh, Gradrigo as a component of a game object and then call its API as you need. I will be very happy if you want to give it a try. Please message me on Twitter at Adam underscore Sporka and I'll send you an invite. And that's it for my talk. Thank you very much for your attention and see you at the QA session.